All right, y'all, what is up? And welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing some crabbing down here on the Texas coast. And then we're gonna be taking those crabs and cooking them up on the beach because today's video is brought to you by Tom Shoe. They're a really cool outdoor company and they make a bunch of different neat gadgets and stuff like that for camping. They reached out and they wanted to hook me up with one of these little camping stoves, these little wood burning stoves to show you guys. And so I decided I'm gonna bring it down here, catch some crabs and make a really neat little crab recipe. But y'all check this thing out, super tiny fits in this little mesh bag right here. You can take it anywhere with you. I think it's gonna be really fun to cook on. So y'all stay tuned. We're gonna go try to catch some of these crabs and then we'll see y'all back here to cook these things up and show the capabilities and just how neat this little wood stove is. Okay, so we're gonna get our crab lines ready. All we're using is pretty simple. We just have like 15 foot of some 40 pound monofilament leader. You could also use string like you see a lot of people doing when they're crabbing, but I just like to use mono because you can buy a whole spool of this stuff for like five or 10 bucks and it'll last years. I've had this for probably like three years already and I think I could crab a hundred times a year and it lasts for 10 years. I don't know, but we're just gonna go ahead and tie up our chicken legs here. So you just buy the cheapest chicken drumsticks you can find. Some people use chicken necks. I prefer drumsticks. They have a little more meat on them. We're just gonna tie a simple knot. Nothing special, y'all. Double knot here. Now we're just gonna go drop it in the water and hopefully we'll see if we can get a crab to pull on it. Shouldn't take long if they're here. Tied to this pole right here. It's just important that whenever you go out crabbing, to always pick up your stuff when you're done. So we're gonna tie it on there, and then whenever we're done, we're gonna cut this off, take it home. We don't want to literally leave any string in the water. Here we got chicken number two that we're dropping in. Do the same thing as the other one, tied up. And then after you get all your chicken out, it's just a waiting game. Okay. So we saw this line go tight right here. You can see it's like a guitar string. That means there's a crab on there. And usually, if it's that tight, that's a pretty good one. So let's go ahead and slowly pull it in. Gonna pull them all the way up to the top. You can see I'm swimming down there with it. Get our net. Oh, got him. There we go. Nice little blue crab. Now, crabs in Texas have to be five inches from point to point on the widest point of their body. So from right here to right there. This guy's probably right at five, but I think we're gonna go ahead and let them go. It's always good to let go the first one of the day. Y'all know how it is. Hey, we only really need like two crabs for the recipe we're gonna be doing. Let's toss them back. Oh man, that's a heavy crab right here. This one feels pretty good, y'all. We're gonna work him in nice and slow so he doesn't come off. Oh, 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 oh. get the net. That's actually a little female. Correct? Yeah, this is actually a little female right here. The easiest way to tell, the number one way to tell, is that they have red on the tips of their claws, like they're wearing lipstick, or like they're wearing fingernail polish. Okay, there we go. So this is a female right here. That's the quickest way to tell, but the for sure way to tell is by looking at the apron. As you can see, this one's more wide, A male is gonna be a small little stripe there. But you can see this one's really full. That's what we call a rush belly right there. That means that it's been a while since it's molted. This would be a really good crab to keep. And in Texas, you are allowed to keep female crabs as long as they are not bearing eggs. This one obviously is not. As you can see, that apron's pushed flat down. You don't see any orange eggs in there. But we're gonna let this one go once again because we're gonna look for some claws a little bit bigger than that. That's like a toothpick. <laughs> Guys, I think we have a jumbo crab here. This line is super tight. You can literally see the line. It looked like we were getting a bite from a fish. You can see the line just straighten out real quick. That's usually a sign of a big crab. We'll pull them up. That's a big crab, y'all. Look at that. Oh, jumbo crab. Wow. And that one is, in fact, going to be a keeper. Let's dump them out and take a look at them. Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking for. That's probably about six inches across. That's a good, healthy crab there. Big claws on him. You can see this guy's been fighting stuff. Look at those claws all broke off. He's not super white and clean, but he's also not a rust belly. But hey, He's pretty heavy. So let's go ahead and take this beautiful blue crab and throw them in the cooler. Well, immediately after we just caught that one, this one got tied again. Feels like another decent crab, not as big, but slowly working them in. We don't want them to know that we're dragging them. They'll let go if they know. This guy doesn't feel that big. That's no, a little one. Oh, he let go. That's all right. We didn't even want to have to deal with getting him out of the net. So just dropped him right there. Let's go check our other lines. Feels like another little one. I don't know. 
definitely better than the last, but I don't know if it's as big as the one that we just caught. Oh, he dropped it right there. Alright, we got one. It might be a smart crab. I feel like he keeps letting it go. We'll let it go. I don't get it, y'all. I think this is the same crab that we've been messing with for like 30 minutes. Every time it grabs it, it goes real tight right in the same spot. And then let's go as soon as we start pulling. Well, I feel pulling now. Let go again. This thing's outsmarted me. Wait. Nope, he's not on there. Okay, so the crabbing is super slow right now. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to pick up the lines and we're going to move to a different spot. It's funny though, because today we only need like two crabs. That's it. I only want two crabs for the recipe and we cannot catch two. We've only caught one. Any other day when we come down here, we try to catch as many as possible and we'll usually catch like 10 or 15 or even 20, even more sometimes. But it's funny how when we only need two, we can't even catch them. Let's go ahead and move spots. Okay, well, as soon as we were leaving, we saw this line get super tight over here. We just picked up the rest of our chicken, but let's go see if there's one on it. They pulled it all the way back to the ramp. Oh yeah, there's a crab. And he dropped it. What is going on today? We just moved spots, pulled up. We're fishing this little creek off the beach. Crabbing, we have a crab right here. There he is. Come in on it, looks like a little guy. Dude, there's like three of them on it. Look at this. They're all letting go, but a bunch of little crabs. We definitely want one bigger than that, but hey, it's a start. Okay, so we have a couple pieces of chicken out, but as I was walking to put out the next piece of chicken, we could just see a ton of crabs. You can see one right there coming up on the bank. This place is littered in crabs. So what I decided to do is just walk down and we're just gonna see if we can see a big one and scoop them on up. See what happens. I mean, I can see a ton. There's like, you can see like five or 10 crabs right in this area, but we just saw a big one right here. Let's see if we can scoop it. Okay, so we set a line out right here. You can see it and it's getting a bite. So no one's gonna pull it in slowly and I'm gonna try to net it from this side of the water. What is that little guy? Two at once, baby. Both these are pretty small. Neither of them are keepers. So go ahead and let them go. Try to find a bigger one. Two little crabs there, once again. Hey. In fact, we're just catching the same two crabs over and over again. He's a feisty one. Ah ha! Just not quick enough though. All right, and there we go. Crab number two. This guy is a keeper, and we're gonna see if we can catch a bigger one for maybe about five minutes. But if not, we're gonna go ahead and keep this one and throw him on ice, and he's gonna go in the pot with the other one. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Well, there we go. That is 100% a keeper. Whoop. Oh, shoot. He got my foot. Oh, gosh. He's quick. He's quick. He's speedy. Just like that. If this thing gets you, we're in for a load of pain. Woo. Look at that. That is about, let's wash this thing off. This is about the dirtiest, brownest crap I've ever seen. Look at the color on this guy, y'all. I mean, he's brown on the back dirty crab that's a full crab hey that is what we need so we can go ahead and let our other one go let me show y'all the reason i'm doing that i'm holding down their claws with my feet not squishing them and then grabbing them by these back here this is called the swimmer and they can't reach around and get you when you hold them by the swimmer there we go though toss this guy back and go and put this guy in the pot because we are done i thought we were never going to catch two crabs today y'all this was like the slowest day of crabbing ever all babies and then only one keeper the whole time it's been like three hours so it's like 100 degrees right now but we have our crabs let's go cook them up and have a nice lunch we'll see you all at the truck first thing the most important thing you need to know for today's dish is that we have some yellow curry paste and coconut milk today we are going to be making some thai yellow curried crab i know a popular way to cook crabs like 
in other parts of the world is chili crab. You know, whenever people are catching those big mud crabs, like in Australia, they cook like chili crab and stuff like that. I didn't want to make chili crab, but I did want to make crab a different way than just steaming or boiling like everyone does around here. And that's why we picked up this yellow curry. Super delicious. If you've never had curry, don't shy away from it. I definitely recommend trying the yellow one first. It's not hot, spicy, really anything like that. It's just a pretty much a big old flavor bomb and it's super delicious. So let's go ahead and get to cooking. So when you get the stove, it comes with a little instruction manual. I've actually used this once or twice already just to mess around with it. It's really cool. And I think I have an idea of how to set it without looking at the instructions. So let's go ahead and assemble this thing. So we're gonna start with the bottom vent right there. On top of that, we put our stove chamber. And then inside of the stove chamber, we put our base plate where the coals go, like I said. That slides down inside of there. As you can see, it's pretty big. It can hold quite a bit of little sticks and twigs and pieces of wood and whatnot. And this thing gets burning super hot. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our fire going in there. Then after we get it rolling, we put the pot supporter and the cross stand on top, lay our pot on there, and we're ready to start cooking. Let's go ahead and get the fire going now. I have just a little fire starter that you would use in your backyard grill or whatever. We're just gonna light that up. Now, obviously if you are out camping, you could get this started just by using little twigs or whatever you find, uh, just like any other fire, right? But we are down here on the beach. There's really not a lot of good wood to get. You can't go walk in the dunes. You're not really supposed to. So I brought some wood from home. Once we got our fire started going, we're just going to go ahead and start adding these little twigs in here. And the goal is to pack this thing pretty tight so we can get the fire going real hot. But that little fire starter makes it super easy. You can absolutely use charcoal in here. You can use whatever you want. But if you're out hiking, you had this in your backpack, you might not have charcoal on you. And this is actually what it's designed for. Okay, so the first thing we have to do before we cook our crabs is clean them. All you do is you take it, pop off the apron, stick your hand up under here, and rip that top shell off. We put them on ice so they're nice and calmed down, as you can see. If not, they'd be going crazy. But we're just gonna, it's kind of hard, guys. Just like that, feed that to the birds, and then we're gonna clean them. So we're just gonna take this, rip off all the gills right here. You don't wanna eat those, it'll make you sick. Rip off the face. If you have a glove, wear a glove, y'all. These can be pretty pointy, so they can really poke you. And we're just gonna take our crab and we're gonna break it in half. Just like this. Boom. The last thing we need to do with the crabs before we cook them is take a knife or a spoon or whatever and just kind of crack the claws a little bit. The reason we're doing this is because we want it to get all that flavor up in the claws. You see it's starting to crack? Just like that. Just so all that flavor, all that spice can soak in there. This will be super delicious. We're gonna do that with all these claws. And then we have our pot on the fire right now. We're about to throw some oil in it and get it going. And we're almost ready to cook. It's getting real hot. Now that all the claws are broken up, there's only one more thing we need to do to get the crabs ready. And that's just give them a little rinse. You could rinse them in the salt water, but uh, I don't feel like rinsing them in this 95 degree creek back here. So we're just gonna rinse them with a the little water bottle. And those are ready to go. So for the Thai yellow curry, what we're gonna need to start off with is some garlic, some ginger, and some onions or shallots or whatever. We're gonna take these, we're gonna go straight into the hot pan. It's seeming like it's sizzling, so perfect. Look at that, frying up real nice. Immediately after that, we'll give it a little mix. Let that get going, and we go in with some garlic. Squeeze garlic, because it's easier than dicing up our own. And some squeezed ginger, for the same reason. There we go. Well, you can already smell the aromatics coming off of this. We're just going to mix this around, let it fry up in the oil for a minute, and then we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients. We're frying up all the vegetables and stuff like that, and we're about to add in the curry paste. We just want to saute that onion down a little bit. We're going to go ahead and add in this curry paste right here. I like quite a bit, so probably do almost all of it in here. Boom. Stir that around, mix it with everything else and just let it simmer for a minute so all those flavors can combine. Okay, now that it's been simmering for a while, let's add in some pieces of crab. This is gonna get all that curry flavor up in there. We're gonna fold it all around so it gets nice and coated. We're gonna add in the rest of our ingredients. We're gonna go in with all the coconut milk here, 12 ounces, and then we're gonna do about the same amount of chicken broth.
Now we're going to close the lid and let that come back up to a boil. We'll take a look at our crab right here. It's almost done. It's been cooking for quite a while. It's steaming nice and good. It's starting to turn red and that's how you know when your crab is done, when it starts to look like that. We're going to give it about five more minutes and then it's going to be time to eat. But let me tell you what, this little stove is pretty cool. It's lightweight, super small, and uh, it seems to work pretty well. we got quite a bit of heat coming off of this thing. You don't want to get too close to it. I'm just sitting right here because I'm blocking the wind, but if you get too close to it, it's gonna heat you up pretty bad, especially when it's 100 degrees out here. But yeah, we've had quite a good flame coming out from under it. Uh, it doesn't really smoke too much either, which is great. And if you wanna check out these for yourself, I'll have everything linked down below. They actually gave me a discount code for y'all guys to use. So if you wanna pick up one of these things and try this out for yourself, you can get 10% off. I'll have the code right up here on the screen. And then you can also go click the link down below and it'll take you to look at these things. Once again, the company is called Tom Shoe. And it's a Tom Shoe wood stove or Tom Shoe camping stove. So definitely search that up, check it out. I'll have everything linked down in the description below. Okay, so our crab has been cooking for a while. I think it's almost done. Y'all come take a look. Steaming nice and good in there. It's turning red. It is red. And that is a telltale sign that your crab is done when it gets that bright red. So let's go ahead and take it out. It's time to eat it. Give it a try. All right. We're gonna plate it up for you guys. So we have a bowl here with a little bit of rice in the bottom of it. Obviously I cooked this at home, but I brought it with us today. We're gonna to take our crab. Got a nice chunk right there. Gotta get out a nice big old claw. And then maybe one more piece. No, we're just gonna get another one. There we go, a bowl full of crab. Now we're gonna take some juice, dump our juice in it. Our curry, our soup. And look at that. We're gonna finish it off with some raw onions right here. Sprinkle them on top. A squeeze of lime. Another lime on the side. That is a delicious looking bowl of Thai yellow curried crab. All right, we're gonna try a bite of this real quick. Let's go in for some of that rice with the soup first. I'm sure it's gonna be hot. That is delicious. I'll take a look at that. All the flavor in there, all the meat. Ooh, it looks good. Let's go ahead and try to pull this off, see if anything will come out with it. A nice lump of Texas blue crab. Let's try it. Dang. Sorry, a little helicopter intermission right there. We just had one buzz right over us. But guys, that was absolutely delicious. I'll definitely be making this recipe again at home. Uh, one of the most flavorful bites of crab I've ever had. A lot of times when you boil crabs or steam them, the flavor doesn't really get inside of it. It just gets on the outside of the shell. But when you do it like this, it is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and eat some more of this real quick. And then we'll see you on just a second to close out the video. But look at that hunk of meat. Cheers. Well, we absolutely destroyed that bowl. We ate every single thing we had in this pot. That might be my new favorite way to eat blue crab that was amazing so i want to say thank you guys for watching don't forget to hit that like button leave a comment down below subscribe if you're not already if you aren't like always thank you guys so very much don't forget to check out tom shoe if you want to check out those awesome products like that awesome wood stove that they sent over like i said everything will be in the description down below the discount code 10 percent off for you guys and the link to the site where y'all can check it out that's all for right now until next time peace curry all over my hands